Hello and welcome to the Monday, March 11th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. So today I want to start with WordPress. I usually kind of ignore WordPress. There are always numerous vulnerabilities in WordPress extensions and such. So kind of got tired of it and don't really mention them anymore here in the podcast. But there is something new going on with WordPress that I think is worth mentioning. And that's attackers deploying JavaScript on compromised websites that are then being used to trick clients into brute forcing passwords against other third-party WordPress websites. WordPress has an API to log in. There's nothing really wrong about this. Uh, that's uh, very common. But uh, typically, you have same origin policy that prevents uh, JavaScript being loaded from a third party from actually abusing these APIs. JavaScript can still send a simple request to the third party, but JavaScript is then prevented from actually parsing the response. So you could do theoretically sort of the brute forcing, but there would be no good way for an attacker to figure out whether or not the password is actually correct. Unless you add a specific header to the API, access control allow origin, asterisks that will allow third parties to actually then parse the response coming back from the API. Now, I tried to figure out what's a default setting here in uh, WordPress and immediately came across a Stack Overflow article that says, hey, if you're having a problem with JavaScript accessing your uh, WordPress API, this is the header that you need to add, access control our origin asterisk. So uh, basically, it looks like there's a widespread recommendation to deploy this insecure configuration. Well, make sure you have done that correctly. Make sure you allow list carefully which origins you allow JavaScript from. Other than that, uh, yes, uh, JavaScript from a third-party website could be used to brute force your accounts. And since these requests will be coming from uh, random web browsers that visit other websites, it will be kind of difficult uh, to filter them any other way. So make sure that your course, your cross-origin resource sharing headers are configured correctly. But well, that's not the only vulnerability we have to talk about. Uh, next, we uh, do have a Cisco secure client vulnerability. That's uh, their VPN client. It's described as a carriage return line feed injection vulnerability. So something like HTTP response splitting. And in this case, it could be used uh, to uh, trick a victim that clicks on a particular link into actually revealing their SAML, so their authentication uh, token. Definitely something that you do want to address. A lot of these VPN client vulnerabilities are usually not all that serious uh, because they're more sort of client side uh, approach escalation and the like. But uh, this one certainly does sound like something that you need to address. It has a CVSS score of 8.2. And then apparently uh, there are still a lot of unpatched Fortinet uh, gateways out there uh, that are vulnerable uh, to CVE 2024-21762. This is currently being exploited. It does allow an arbitrary code execution on the device. So something that uh, you probably want to double check that uh, you're patched again. I'll link again to the original Bishop Fox uh, blog post from back in February when that was originally announced. Uh, they all so it came out with a simple Python script to scan for vulnerable systems. I'm always hesitant uh, to quote any of uh, the sort of you know, vulnerable systems out there numbers, uh, given all the honeypots and such, but looks like the number is substantial and definitely something that needs to be addressed. I think in part the problem here may be that a lot of them are owned by smaller businesses who may not have the most robust uh, patching practices. 
And then we do have a vulnerability in another piece of code that I often ignore, and that's a PG admin. A PG admin, a little bit like uh, my admin, uh, is a web based tool to allow you to administer. Postgres databases. There is a new vulnerability out there. Uh, Shelter Web Security has details regarding the vulnerability, including proof of concept exploit code, which, well, looks like it's pretty straightforward, pretty simple to exploit, and apparently it is also already being exploited. Tools like uh, PG Admin should, again, not be exposed to the internet. Put at the very least some simple uh, digest authentication on top of it uh, to prevent sort of uh, simple access to the code without authentication. And with that, uh, don't simply trust the built in authentication that the tool provides. And a real nice write-up by Canva regarding vulnerabilities in fonts. This is one of the things that keeps coming back in operating systems and various programming languages, and I think is often underestimated and overlooked. This is a more detailed write-up of two vulnerabilities that basically can lead to arbitrary code execution in some basic font parsing libraries. Font tools is one uh, that they're looking for and where they do have a proof of concept available. It's a simple sort of XML external entity uh, style of vulnerability. And uh, then there is a second uh, vulnerability that also does allow essentially the execution of arbitrary uh, code. Definitely worth uh, reading up on these vulnerabilities and, like I said, often overlooked. Uh, so uh, be aware of any patches that may come out here for Font Tools, Font Forge, and uh, apply those patches uh, quickly. These vulnerabilities may then also apply to other tools that are parsing uh, fonts. So you know, good way to do some research here uh, to try some of those tricks against other font parsing tools. Well, and this is it for uh, today. We also had some QNAP vulnerabilities that I didn't quite get to. Just update your systems and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.